themselves. Boomers. Makes a nice move. Going right to the net. And he scores! You're watching Cuts Town Hockey only on Nick's Hockey Broadcast. I got Kutztown head coach Raul Batista. Uh, coach, uh, your team had a good 4-3 win over Delaware last week, and now you face a red-hot uh, Newman team. How are you preparing to play against the, uh, the top team in our division tonight? Yeah, I mean, we had a good week of practice here. Uh, the boys have been uh, working hard. Uh, just kind of want to follow through on that uh, on that Delaware game, I thought we played great defensively. Uh, definitely uh, been hitting that home with the, with the guys, you know. Smart defense first, and we'll turn that into good offense. And, uh, and you know, I think they're ready for it. And they're buying in on the system. Good to hear. Coach, not only it's a big night for the sake that we're playing Newman, but obviously it's uh, Hockey Fights Cancer Night. What does Hockey Fights Cancer Night mean to you and just the whole team in general? Yeah, I mean, it's a great event. Um, you know, Unfortunately, you know, I know a lot of people are battling this disease, and uh, you know, anytime you can give back to the cause and play for something like that, I think it means a lot to the people, to the team. You know, and you know, just giving money out to, to the organizations, I think is great. You know, to help help out all these people uh, as best as we can. Always a great cause. And one last question: Who's going to be starting in net for the Golden Bears tonight? Uh, we got Jay Johnny coming back in net. Um, he had a rough one against Binghamton, but I think he's going to bounce back pretty good tonight. So uh, yeah, I think he's ready to go. Thanks, Coach. <laughs> Watching Kutztown Hockey on Nick's Hockey Broadcast. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Hockey Fights Cancer Night, where the Kutztown Golden Bears will take on the Newman University Knights. I will explain why I'm dressed up as a handsome brother later throughout this game. But for now, time for tonight's starting goaltenders. In net for the Golden Bears shall be number 34, Jay Janney. Janney, after playing against Big and Tim, well, the Bears lost 9-1. to We're going to get some redemption tonight. Jenny 2-3-0. Goals against average 4.29. Same percentage of .881. In goal for the Newman University Knights is Noah Makis. This is his first start of the season. Golden Bears in their pink and purple uniforms tonight, just as D3 was earlier in the week. Bears won 4-3 over Delaware last week, taking it on a challenger on Newman. I'll go over why their challenger later on. Puck is dropped, and we are underway at Hockey Fights Cancer tonight for D2. It's the Golden Bears and the Knights. This will be backhanded back behind the goal. Golden Bears trying to get it back out there from Graney. That puck deflects and goes out of play only 16 seconds into the game. So, the, so Kutztown's 4-5-0. Won 43 over Delaware last week to end their four-game losing streak. The Knights, however, have been red hot 6-1-1, one, and, one, and they are on a five-game winning streak coming into tonight's game. And the last game, they won 6-3 over Salisbury. This comes right behind the net there of Jay Janney. DeRosa will try to hit one off the boards. Trying to get it back the other way was Novak as that pass was laid offside, waved down as now the... Puck is going to bounce off the boards, and it was shot back towards the other way. This goes tip back in front. Centering pass for a shot that goes wide. The chance coming there for the Knights there was Andrew McGinley, who leads the team in points as that shot goes wide. McGinley, so far this season, 10 goals, 7 assists for 17 points in only 6 games. He's been red hot, so watch out for him. This goes off the side of the 
J. Johnny Nett. As the Knights still set up on the point, this pass goes to the circle as McGinley's going to get another shot that goes wide of J. Janney. This goes into his glove. It's not play. J. Janney, not J. Johnny, excuse me. A lot of people have actually missaid his name, including myself, but it happens. Sorry if there was any connection um, errors there in the first few minutes. Lost a little connection there for a brief second, but we seem to be good to go now. Nelly Swatlinski, vice president of Kutztown Hockey, gathers it up on the corner. Bears trying to get it back out, but they can't as Jay Janney has it on his stick. This bounces off the boards now towards the corner of Petaway. Bears will trying to still get it out of their own zone. They'll make this pass on the wing, bringing it back the other way is Carpenter. Carpenter, the freshman, with a shot to flex as this goes off the safety netting. So for Kutztown, they have yet to win a game within their division. They lost to Penn State earlier in the year. They have not played They have not played Salisbury yet, and this is the first game against Newman. Off this tie-up defensively there for Newman as this puck bounces up into the air. Gravity brings it down, and it goes to Colton Bates, the junior, who had a nice assist to a Chase Canestra goal at Delaware last week. Whacking for the puck again. Takes a Newman player down. Centering pass in front for Canestra. Here's a slap shot that goes off the glass. Carpenter has it behind the goal towards the corner. And now goes to Bates. To Canestra. Canestra trying to finesse on through. Intended pass for Bates as Newman gets it out of their own zone for now. Knights get a line change. Backhand pass goes there for Slotwinski. Outlet feed to Carpenter, going past the line, leaves it for Tyree Petaway. Petaway, a good save is made there by Makis as the Knights manage to get it past the blue line again. That was Rupert with the clearing attempt, 15 in navy blue for the Knights. Rupert nearly touched the puck on the left wing. Back coming the other way was Michael DeRosa. DeRosa with a shot, gets checked hard towards the boards. And as we have a lot of players for D3 watching on tonight. Paracone passes it off the boards, right out towards the corner near DeRosa, as well as Gavin Wolf. Here's a shot there by Dalton Bull that was whacked down. Bull looking at his second goal. His only goal was that way. Plus it, as Paracone's wrist shot goes wide. Bull trying to go for the puck again, cleared down towards the Kutztown zone. Paul Paracone had another assist last game. Paracone so far, two goals, five assists for seven points. Good offensive numbers, especially for defensemen. Speaking of Paracone, will make this pass towards the Kutztown bench as now making some plays there for the Golden Bears there was Repsic. This goes back and forth. That was, beg your pardon, that was Gavin Wolf actually who was bringing the puck past the wing. We have a Kutztown Golden Bear laboring to get to the bench. That is Dalton Bull as we're going to get an icing here. Bull is... He is on his feet, but he's laboring something as he's going to go to the bench. On the ice now for the Bears is Novak, Graney, Pareka, Canestra, as well as Jackson Foster. 15.31 to go in the first period. No score. Hockey fights cancer night. Off this top from Graney. Novak backhands one there for the point. Here's a shot there by Anilla, and a save is made there by Ma and a save is made there by Makis as now the Bears try to chip it back past the line and they do there was Foster passed there for Novak in a shot that was grainy actually as Makis makes the save sorry if some of the names I'm saying it's a bit incorrect these are definitely New Jersey's I'm trying to get a little used to not to make excuses but the they have darker purple numbers on their shoulders a little harder to pan out at first glance try to get better at that though off this face of Tonella as Novak chips one back towards Grainy. Grainy. Winning a lot of face off this year. Gets it back for Novak for a wrist shot that goes over the crossbar and off the glass. Knights clear it back the other way from Palano as now they'll try to get some offensive attacks. Good to see the Golden Bears getting some offensive opportunities with Newman on a five-game winning streak coming into tonight. Back comes Graney on his own, making some nice moves. Trying to stash one by as he couldn't finish it as he runs into the goal post. The net comes off his moorings. And Graney's going to get back up. Hopefully he's okay. You never know what happens when you run into the iron of a net. And he seems to be okay from that. Great opportunity for Graney to get the first one of the night. 
As they're going to move this face off to the offside dot. Off this face off, Newman wins it defensively. But Tardillo will pass one off the boards there towards the circle. And now going for Molino, centering pass for, that pass was intended for Rebson, but he lost control of where the puck was going. Molino near the Zamboni doors goes down on one knee, gets back up as the Golden Bears slot. Winsky will have to chase for it behind his own net of Jay Janney. Gets forechecked, pedal waits pass, intercepted there for a wrist shot that was blocked. The chance coming there was the captain of the Knights, Zach Beamer. So far, Beamer has three goals for three assists and six points. Meanwhile, Bears will bring it back past the zone, and this will be a delayed offside. Wiped down a Slotwinski. Whacking there was Petaway, and taking her there was Bauer, who shoots it down as the Bears get some reinforcements on the defensive side. This is behind the net there for Gosselin. Gosselin's going to circle back behind his goal. 13-36 and counting remaining in the first. Still no score. Shot down that nearly went up the, glo the glove of Jack Bateman. Or Bateman, I beg your pardon, as we're going to get a whistle to stop play with 13-29 to go in the first. So it is Hockey Fights can tonight. Second time this week, Kunstan Hockey has had it. D3 had it on Sunday. D2's having it tonight. And because it's Halloween, that's why I decided to dress up as one of the Hanson brothers. Several players for D3 are dressing up in costumes. Jacob Deluzio in particular is dressing up as Batman, actually, with a Kutztown jersey. And another reason why I'm actually dressing as a Hanson tonight is to actually briefly mention Steve Carlson. He was one of the three Hanson brothers from the movie Slapshot. And unfortunately, he has um, dealt with cancer over the last few years. I just felt like, you know, it's it would be nice kind of to honor what a great hockey legend, and especially from Slapshot. Really good guy, too. So hopefully Steve Carlson does better and has better future days. Newman tries to take the puck defensively here as it's backhanded back towards Chase Canestra with a goal last game. Has two goals to his name this season. Dumped back and deposited to the corner. Carpenter trying to make a centering pass and went off the side of the goal. Off the glass there. Whacking there was Perico backhanded there by Carpenter as now the Knights will try to forecheck it back the other way. Backhanded there from Chibatel as now the Knights are going to take it back on the wing for a wrist shot and a save. It's made by Jay Janney as he'll stop play. Triple, Triple T was the one who got the shot on that. He has three goals. McGinley wins this face off as his puck is tipped back towards the left point. A collision is made on the boards. Bears now will bring it past the line. And tumbling down towards the boards there was Liam O'Neill. The freshman, former player of Genesis, as this goes past the blue line for Jackson Foster, falls down on the blue line. Almost thought a stick was caught up there as they're going to call play dead with 12.29 12, to go in the first. As this is hockey fights, Kant and I also want to mention someone else. I want to mention a good friend I had as a kid. Uh, her name was Caitlin Dickey, who lost the battle to brain cancer when she was nearly 10 years old back in the year 2013. She was a really good friend of mine and I wish her well in heaven and hopefully for the funds that Hockey Fights can tonight rises, um, raises from tonight's game and everyone else can help help in the research to stop cancer and the definitely a great goal our world can achieve if it could ever be made. Antonio Nell, the freshman, former Igbo Jaguar will forehand one back for O'Neal. As now this comes back in front towards the goal crease as Foster is going to try to get it out of his way there. Onella will try to go for two as it's kept back on the point for a sh shot that goes towards the net. It bounces wide. As now the Bears are still trying to get it out of their own end from Graney. It bounces wide back towards the corner and off the boards. And now he hits it off the boards to give it to Dalton Bowl. This is backhanded back towards the point. The Knights are still going to set up Jackson Novak on the ice now as that shot goes wide of the net there of Jay Janney. Whacking forward there was Rupert. It goes back towards the corner of Rosencrans. 
as Novak's going to lob one past the boards and bounces to it as the Bears rush back the other way. Outlet pass goes to Stephen Graney. Graney goes for another chance for a backhand there that goes wide of the goal. Collision off the glass. Here's a shot that goes wide. I believe that came from Novak. A collision is made there by Stephen Graney trying to take down Polano as now the Bears will go for another chance. Swalinski with a wrist shot past the blue line and a save is made by Makis to stop play with 10.39 to go in the first. And just to show you guys the full Hanson look, I got the jersey, I got the glasses, I even got the foil. Hope you guys like it. Pace off upstairs by the stick of Luke Repsic takes control. Stumbling there briefly was Phil Melito. Just deflects for a shot there by Repsic on the circle. And a save was made by Makis as now the Bears still keep it in. Sotlinski a shot. Bounces off the boot there of Josh Bauer. Josh Bauer, six goals, two assists for eight points so far this year in his sophomore season. Pass coming from... That 10 is now the Knights will shoot it back the other way. Therefore, this goes there to Zach Beamer. This puck bounces off of Gosselin as now Gosselin's going to shoot one past the red line. No icing here since he was past the center ice line. Josh Bauer, former puck on Trojan, will take possession. Off the boards there, he'll chase for it again. This puck goes into the air and into the bench. It seems like Jackson Novak almost caught it. I think he seems to be claiming that he caught it. Almost thought he didn't. As they'll get a new puck and not use the same one to continue the game. Off this face off. Kutztown will whack one back past the line. Makis being kind of taunted by the D3 players. Not sure if you can hear them. But they were trying to get his attention. This bounces, a weird deflection was made there as the Knights have a little trouble getting out of the zone. They still can't get it out. Good play by Canestra. Colton Bates going forward to his Carpenter. And now McGinley nearly rushed the other way, but Perico keeps it into the zone. Canestra makes a nice check there on Flynn Plummer on the corner after he lost the puck. He's trying to, Plumber's trying to go back after, and a big check is made in front, and we're going to have a whistle to stop play, and interference penalty is coming up here, and based on the fans' reaction, it, I believe it's against the Knights, at least, and we are going to have a penalty against the Knights, it will be on Flynn Plummer, after he was checked by Chase Canestra on a legal checking play, Plummer seemed to retaliate by going back after him on this corner, and it's going to cost him. Power play coming up for the Golden Bears. Granny on this faceoff. Kicked it free to get it to the point. No, back fanning on there was Perico. And lost the other way. Back comes the other way there is Beamer. Shorthanded chance for the Knights as that shot goes away. As he runs into the goaltender, he runs into Jay Janney, the captain for the Knights. As the net was dislodged, both players seemed to be okay. So it is just a two-minute power play for the Bears. A minute 50 is left on it at this time. This is tipped off a night stick. That play was made there by Cameron Wolf. Forehand pass going to Beamer. As the Bears are going to try to rush the other way on the offensive attack. Graney. Now the Bears will bring it past the red line and blue line. It goes to Stephen Graney. He's had a lot of good chances here. Bass goes to Novak. Twirls back. Bears will try to set it up. And a good play is made by Beamer. Who's going to chase after it again. He's going to get yet another shorthanded chance. Beamer making a near deep as he, gets, he runs into Paracone and Novak. Brobeck, as they call him in the locker room, pretty much everywhere at this point. He might as well change his name. Novak's going to backhand one towards Paracone. Wax it past the blue line. Power play is halfway through now. DeRosa will take it on the corner. Lost it as the Knights nearly cleared there. A new complaint was made there 
by as a player for Canestra. He fell down on his balance. No one even checked him. He gets the puck now on the corner. Canestra approaching the circle with a wrist shot and swung it up there right into his chest is Noah Makitz to make the stop. 32 seconds to go on the power play. Unfortunately, at body zone rink, they don't show the shots on that on the scoreboard. Kutztown seems to be to get, getting a lot of offensive chances to say at the very least. Barnett and Repsik for this faceoff. And Repsik won it. Petaway still looking to get his first goal in D2 with D3 last year. Canestra. Still wait. Holding on in the high slot. Canestra gives it there for the on the circle. Canestra gets it back. Canestra with the wrist shot blocked in front as it goes to Repsik. Repsik passes it towards the other point. It goes now to Jackson Foster. Foster side and that there is Repsik in front of the goal there is Carpenter. Side of the net there for Petaway, but the but the puck was tipped away. A big check is made involving Carpenter as well as Listen to Lillo as he is going to be weaving a check after the whistle. Repsik was taken down there in front of the officials. He was checked there by Ryan Goslin, and we are definitely going to have some penalties. The initial penalty when the Bears had a power play, the penalty from coming from Finn Plummer has expired, but we are going to have some more players in the box of shame. And like in the movie Slapshot as a Chiefs goalie once said, you go to the box and you feel shame, but then you get freed. You do that, you go to the box, you know, uh, two minutes by yourself and you feel shame, you know, mm -hmm. and then you get free. Now Canestra taking the shot on that actually was McGinley. He's been dangerous so far. Canestra took a player down, makes a pass in front, but no bear to tip it home. 6.33 and counting to go in the first period. No score in Hockey Fights Cancer Night. And we'll get a, yet another whistle here. And we're going to have another penalty. It'll be against McGinley. He's going in the box for two. Okay, so it's going to be four on three for a minute 24. Off the space up to DeRosa. Even more space to work with here. Body zone. DeRosa shot. See me there by Makis to stop play. Not sure if you can see there, but in the middle of all these people, Jacob Deluzio is here dressed up as Batman. Wonder if Batman ever liked hockey. I'm not wearing hockey pants. Novak off the space off. Paracone on the blue line. Gives it there to Rosa. Holding back on. Waits. Fakes the drive. Gives it to Paracone. Back to DeRosa. Drive. It goes wide. Man, DeRosa seems to always like to impersonate Ovechkin with a slap shot on the left circle. Gets it back again. DeRosa lost the puck. Gets it in control. Rouse into the corner for Graney. 54 seconds to go in the four on three. Graney off there for Paracone. Waiting for it's DeRosa. Paracone waiting. DeRosa holding on. He's waiting to fire the, the puck as Paracone whacks one back towards DeRosa as his go past this puck goes past the blue line. DeRosa trying to escape. Trying to escape to Butti as now Novak is going to bring it past the line. The captain to Graney. Graney approaching the circle. Back in comes for DeRosa. And it goes wide. No, I'm not sure how that stayed out. Graney, DeRosa trying to give him past the point as it goes past the blue line. It'll be four and three for the next 12 seconds. Back coming Novak approaching goal. Good Novak pass goes for DeRosa. A shot that was blocked out. Good defensive play is made there by Aiden Grabrowski as now the Knights are going to try to kill some time as the four on three has expired. Penalty box door is open. Somebody's got to close that. DeRosa will now give it to Swatwinski. Now it goes to Phil Melito. Melito going past the line. Melito on the wing. Melito as now this goes all the way down. We're back to five on five at least for now. Really good competitive game of both sides. Kutztown really having a good first period so far, but we still got 4-15 and counting remaining in it. It's still no score in Hockey Fights Cancer Night. Back at best, back coming the other way. It's the captain, Beamer, once again on the wing as that goes off the glass. Rolling to center ice now. 
Bears trying to take it away, and they will, but this will be an offside as the Bolito was trying it, to bring it past the blue line. Big, big game for Kutztown. As I was saying, Newman winning five straight, 6-1-1, one, and, one, and the Bears definitely, after that four-game losing streak, tied to extend a winning streak. If they could beat a team like Newman tonight, it would definitely be great to have moving forward. We'll see if they can do that. Morris, it's past him to away. Goes to Carpenter, got it across, and a save is made there by Migas from Chase Canestra. As the Knights will now rush back the other way. Morris, and who turned over the puck recently, this pass goes off the boards there. Nearly kept onside by Carpenter. Swatwinski shoots it on an onside play. This comes towards the net, and save is made by Makis as we have a player for Kutztown go down. This puck is loose in front. Canestra back to Zawinski, wristing one, blocked in front as it ricochets towards the corner. Carpenter, Canestra behind Gretzky's office. Weak centering pass as now Swatwinski touches the puck as we are going to get, we are going to get a, almost seem to be an unexpected whistle. I'm sorry if I can't specify what the whistles are for sometimes, obviously it's, it's apparent when there's penalty. Sometimes there's a bit of unexpected high stick. As they're going to move the face off here towards the circle with 3.11 to go in the first. No score. Dalton Bull wins the face off. Frankie Izzy, the, the freshman, almost got a goal last week against Delaware. Moving back the other way there for the Knights there was Rupert. Rupert's going to backhand one back towards the corner. Picked up there by DeCrosta. As now DeCrosta's trying to still get it for it. He's getting checked there by Graney. A few other Kutztown players are with him too. Still stuck there on the corner. And here it comes through for Gavin Wolf where you have an arm up in the air. Delayed penalty coming up against the Knights. The Bears are going back on the power play as... The Bears will get yet another chance to potentially get on the board. DeCrosta will go in the box as I was just talking about him. So far this season, he has two goals for two assists for four points. Graney on the faceoff here for yet another power play for the Bears. As his goats pass. <clears throat> Stephen Graney at center ice on the wing will shoot it down. Puck rolls around past the corner, going there for DeRosa. Paracum couldn't keep it onside, however. Falls down, nearly whacked it away. He whacked it away as a near breakaway for Cameron Wolf was prevented. Good defensive play there by Paracone. He'll pass it there for Graney to Novak. President of KU Hockey and President, yeah, President of D2 and D3 and Captain of D2. Bauer's going to go behind the net. Bauer still holding on, waiting, going past a few of the circles. Bauer being whacked. Centering pass deflected wide. Graney shoots one from the point that goes behind the net. This is shot all the way back down. Last minute to play in the first period. A near check is made there on Graney as now DeRosa chases for it down. Michael DeRosa. 46 seconds left in the period. Nine seconds to go on the power play. Repsick chasing for it on the corner. Avoids the check, trying to go for it there as well as Josh Bauer. 33 seconds left to go. Batman really trying to get in their faces. Jacob Deluzio to be precise. As now the Knights will do, will do a good job killing this penalty as we're back to five on five hockey. 19 seconds to go in the period. Repsick. To Josh Bauer, going past the line. Bauer gets taken hard there as he makes a check. As he's checked out, and he seems to be shaken up. Josh Bauer seems to be hurt as they are not calling the whistle. They finally do, and Bauer does not seem to be okay. And hold your breath. Hopefully Bauer's going to be okay. He's going to get back up on his knees, and he's going to go back to the Kutztown bench on his own power. 5.7 seconds to go in the period. Bauer will get time to recover during the intermission, and hopefully he returns. And as I say that, we have a penalty against Kutztown. 
So this power play will go into the second period unless the Knights score with 5.7 seconds left. I believe that's Repsig that's in the box right now. And off this face, I'm going to get a shot towards it, and they score! A buzzer beater for the Knights! 2.3 seconds remaining in the period, 3 seconds on the man advantage, and Newman University has a 1-0 lead just like that. We're losing! Teamwork, guys, more teamwork. They're burying us alive! Tommy Angelo with the goal, 71 in Maroon. His seventh goal of the season, and the Knights get momentum to end the first period. The, the Bears were doing really good. Bowers seemed to get a bit shaken up. The Bears had a penalty kill, and it did not last long, and Newman takes a one to nothing lead. Puck is struck. Time is going to expire, and it is one to nothing Knights after one. We will be back for the second. Second period is about to get underway. It is one to nothing Newman after one. Newman took a one nothing lead on a very quick power play to end the first period. I asked if, um, if Golden Bears forward Josh Bauer is okay after that hit. I've been told that he is. And speaking of Josh, he's on the ice now to get ready for the second period. So the only goal coming from the first period, well, obviously coming from Newman, was from Tommy Angelo. And for him, that was his seventh goal on the year. He wears 71 in navy blue to be exact. Both goalies switching sides, including myself, at least on the side of the rink. On the first line for the Golden Bears, it's Pareka, it's DeRosa, it's Graney, it's Paracone, and it's Novak. Newman University getting their first line out. As the second period's about to get underway. Kutztown having a lot of good offensive chances in the first. Definitely encouraging. Obviously, Newman has momentum going into this one as they have a 1-0 lead. As the second period's about to get underway. Graney for this faceoff. Buck is dropped and the second period is underway at Body Zone and Kutztown's Hockey Fights Cancer Night. It's backhanded nearly off the stick of Jackson Novak. The puck comes into the air. Gravity brings it down. As now the Bears, Stephen Graney on the red line. Flips one pass towards the corner, towards Molito. Beg your pardon, that was Pareka. Back in there by Graney. Goes to the side of the net. So from Garbalski, 61 in navy blue for the Knights. This goes off the boards of the Kutztown bench. The Knights will rush back the other way. McGinley. On the corner, make a pass in front that was tipped wide as the Knights still have possession. Backhander, another backhand shot on the side of the net there of Jay Janney. Would not go as it went wide. Holding on to there from the point there was, was Fatoski as now the Knights take it back the other way on the corner. Going after the puck there was Chabunti as he lost the puck on his stick. As now Paracone's going to backhand one back towards the point as the Knights will set up here. Paleno will hit one in front as now the both teams are trying to get some possession as Paracone clears it back the other way, hits the corner. Greeny with a blast goes off the glove there. Good save is made there by Makis as Greeny was trying to go high side. Intercepted pass made by Antonio Onella, the former Igwu Jaguar, played against Phantoms Youth 18 AA in a game I did for Phantoms Youth last year at Steel Ice Center in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Back in there by Baton. This goes behind the goal there for Baton as now and now a, a player for Kutztown gets checked hard on the circle. That was Josh Bauer. Good to see that he's at least back in the game for now. Knights reset up here at center ice. Bauer makes a check on a Knights player actually near the Kutztown bench. Kaputski was the player he tried to take down as it's, it's tipped back towards center ice. Bears rush back the other way. Coming back the other way for the Bears. It's chicked hard on the boards. As now it's kept on the point there. For Arisha, a save is made there by Makis. A chance coming from Jackson Foster. Still looking to get his first goal and point of the season. Backhand play made by Repsick and slugging for it where it was Molito. Tipped off a stick of a Knights player as now this goes behind the net. Bauer, the former Pocket and Trojan, gets checked off his shoulder. As now, good plays made by the captain of the Knights. Beamer had several rushing plays for the Knights during the 
first period, including an eye man rush, actually a shorthanded chance, actually, I should say, from the, on one of the Bears' power plays. El Nello off the board towards the stick of Phil Melito. Melito off the glass, the puck deflects, chasing after it for the Bears there on the corner was Colton Bates, the junior. Check is made on the glass there by Josh Bauer. As Slotwinski lobs one, that was tipped off the body there of, of Bailey Gutens as now this goes back towards the circle. Back it comes to a point for a slap shot, and it goes right into the glove of Jay Janney. The chance coming from Robert, from uh, Robert Lictorello. Sorry if I mispronounced the name. It's one of the harder names on the Knights roster to read out loud tonight. Off the defensive face of the Knights, win it. Take it on the corner, back in it there by Wolf. Not Gavin Wolf for the Knights, that is Cameron Wolf for the Knights. Dumped back into the zone there by Gosselin. As now this goes behind the net of Jay Janney. Backhanded back towards the corner of Canestra. A check is made there by Colton Bates. He tried to take tried to take down a player there for the Knights as now this is rattled back towards center ice. Petaway going for it. Colton Bates will try to take control of Swat Winsky, trying to make a long way pass to Canestra. Canestra, the freshman, will chase for it, and they'll get an icing here. Called here against Kutztown. Face off will be moved all the way down to the Knights' end of the zone. 16.02 to go in the second period in hockey fights. Can't tonight for D2. It is one to nothing, Newman. Off the tie-up. And the Bears take it back away. Moving back the other way on the wing there was Carpenter. As this goes past the blue line. Delayed off sides here against the Bears. As now we'll get an icing. Dalton Bull. Paul Perico. Gavin Wolf. Liam O'Neill. It's on the ice now as well as Michael DeRosa for the Bears. Bull for this faceoff. Against DeCrosta. DeCrosta won the draw there. At a penalty last period for the Knights. This goes up into the air. The Bears keep it into the zone. That was Dalton Bowl. Shoots it past the blue line. Cleared back the other way by Grabowski is now the Knights rush it back nearly the other way there from DeCrosta. DeCrosta's pass. Tipped off another stick as now the Bears will try to get it past the line. Onside play. It's Gavin Wolf to the shot. See me there in front as Wolf is trying to get a better back inch. Arm is up in the air. We have a delayed penalty coming up. A bear is down near the blue paint. That is, that appears to be Dalton Ball. We have a tripping penalty coming up here. And much sure who this was against because Jay Janney was not retreating towards the bench. I did not see him trying to leave his net. And this penalty is going to be on, it seems to be on the Knights. And it will be. Two-minute minor penalty, stripping penalty against Donald Rosencrans. Another opportunity for the Bears to tie the laces at one as Graney wins the faceoff right away. Paracoat on the point. Gives it there for DeRozo. See if he tries to take another slap shot. Perico to Grady. Makes a nice move. Takes another dinky play to the side of the No big first shot on the side of the cage. And a nice save is made there by Makis as he does a snow angel to stop play. Grady and McGinley. Two excellent players in their own rights for both teams. McGinley is going to be taken out of the faceoff. D3 players reacting to it. As this puck is now dropped. Kept on the line by Paracone. Pass goes to the side of the corner of DeRosa. DeRosa, watch out. McGinley's going to chase for it the other way as Paracone will retrieve it back behind his own goal. Almost wonder if McGinley is related to NHL All-Star Alexander McGinley who played for the Buffalo Sabres back in the 90s and 2000s. Paracone trying to make a centering pass. Gives it for Graney. Graney with a shot off the boards as it goes up the side of the cage as the Knights manage to clear it out. Good play made by Nicholas Polano as he whacked it off the glass to get it out of harm's way. Halfway through the power play now. 14, 17 in counting to go in the second. Still 1-0 Newman. Paracone gets checked as he gets it down to the corner of Josh Bauer behind the goal. 
Bauer setting up, looking at some option plays. Guy there for DeRosa. Side in that shot. Rebound there for Novak as he couldn't get it through there. Chance for Perico. Couldn't get the puck on his stick blade as the Bears couldn't keep it in their zone. Actually, they have to. They have it in their zone now. They couldn't keep it in the Knights zone. Well, they're trying to bring it back in. They're trying to evade their territory as well. Have an icing here on the Bears' own power play. Jackson Novak seeming to disagree. As we have 31 seconds to go on the tripping minor penalty for the Knights. Off this faceoff. As the Bears will try to get it out of their zone with 24 seconds counting to go on their man advantage. Going past the line there for the Bears, there was Steven Graney. Graney for a shot on the angle. He scores! The game is tied! Paul Grains provide fiber, vitamins, and other nutrients to your complete breakfast power play goal for Graney. His sixth goal on the season. And as of this moment, Grady now leads the Kutztown Golden Bears team in points. His ninth point on the year going past Josh Bow with eight. 18 seconds remaining on that man advantage. And the Bears have tied the laces at one. It went past the five hole. It seemed to be there of Makis as we get a tie game at body zone. Check is made near the blue line. That appeared to be Colton Bates that went down. Oh, is in front for Petaway. Trying to whack one past the line, as well as Canestro winning on the pass feed attempt. As the Bears have it, therefore, Carpenter. Backhander past center ice. Now the Bears are going to shoot one past the other way on the wing for Petaway to pick it back up. Pet away there for Swatwinski. Long pass attended there for seemed to be Carpenter. As now Swatwinski on defense will hit it off the boards and the glass. Petaway will chase for the official jumping out of the way. Petaway getting past the line on an onside play. Lost the puck as now this is back in it back towards the point. Check is made there by Chase Canestra. He attempted to take down Jacob McClanahan as now... This will go out of play to stop the chaos, at least for now. 12.24 to go in the second period. The game is tied at one apiece. Goal coming from Stephen Graney. Off this faceoff, Repsit couldn't win it. Chabido was the one who won the faceoff for the Knights. That shot on that goes wide there from Phil Molito. Molito in his attempt to get his first goal on the year. He only has one assist as of this time. This puck bounces off the back chest there of Antonio Onello. McGinley will make this outlet pass going back the other way there. Was the goal scorer from last period. Angelo lost possession of the biscuit on his stick as now Repsix pass to Phil Molito. Gets ran to by a shoulder there as now the Knights will try to carefully get it through center ice after they get it out of their own zone. Pass coming there from Ryan Gosselin. Long range feed. And it'll be an icing against Newman as a result of that. For those of you in the chat, yes, Ben, these are nice jerseys. Off the face of for Perico. Hits it off the boards back in front. If there's one thing I must say for the Hockey Fights Cancer jerseys, I know Hockey Fights Cancer is only a, a one-time thing, but almost wish they wore these more than one game, but at least they have them for tonight. Because they do look really good on them. This puck bounces up into the air. A big check is made by Frankie Izzy on the doors. You can see from here the freshman making a good two-way play. In one of my games I actually did in the USPHL last year for the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Knights, not the Newman University Knights, Wilkes-Barre Scranton Knights, in a game I did around this time of year actually, the Knights also wore Hockey Fights Cancer jerseys. They had similar design to what Cutstown's wearing right now. They also look really good in those, too. They play the Aviators, if I remember correctly, in that game. You can look it up on the channel. But meanwhile, the DeCasto is going to take a shot on the net that goes wide. Beg your pardon, that was Jack Baton as now the Knights trying to get possession at center ice. Baton going for it again for the Knights, too, in navy blue to be exact. As his puck goes back toward the corner for a pass that goes wide. 
kept on the line there. Kaminsky was the one who kept it onside. He's waiting on the left point. Gets the puck there. Kaminsky's going to wait as he hits it off the side of the boards behind the cage. Now it goes to Zach Beamer. But not for long. Halfway through regulation time at body zone as we are tied at one. And icing will be caught here against the Golden Bears. Off the space of the Knights control, kept in the zone there by Polano as this is on the corner there for the Crosta as now the Knights still keep it in the zone from Polano. This is a live puck near the circle there, Frankie Izzy. Kopninski kept it on the line. Paracone's going to pass by my Knicks Hockey Broadcast banner. You can kind of see from here, it's a blue banner. Shot it on the net there to save it's made by Jay Janney as his puck. We have some, we have Gavin Wolf trying to get a little angsty around. He's trying to get, it seemed to be almost bear hugging Nicholas Polano and not in a friendly way as we have DeRosa getting checked on the boards there. Seem to have some reactions from the Newman bench and I believe we have a penalty coming up. I believe we do. Gavin Wolf is slowly approaching the bench. And we do. The Bears, once again, are going on the man advantage. Ryan Barnett, very frustrated as he slams the door shut in the penalty box. So another power play for the Bears now. They've had quite a few of them so far in this game. Brandy, who had a power play goal early in this period, wins this faceoff. Perico with a shot that goes wide of the net. As the Knights clear it down, good play was made by Cameron Wolf. Gavin Wolf is still on the bench for the Bears. DeRosa on defense. We'll give it to Perico. Those two work well together as he runs into Beamer on the blue line. Novak clears it in as it goes towards the corner. Bauer, as well as Graney, will try to get possession. Nearly comes free. Novak made a good play to get it to the boot there of Perico. Perico, DeRosa, eager to get that puck, has it. Perico again. Wrist shot, see me there. Good stop is made once again by Noah Makis as the Knights clear it down. Beamer's going to go shorthanded for the Knights. Trying to make a pass in front. As a player for the Bears gets checked, that was DeRosa. As now, meanwhile, Novak brings it on an onside play. Backhand pass goes to Grady. Now it's there for DeRosa. That shot goes wide as it's forechecked nearly by Novak of a few players. As now, Grady has it behind his net. Grady fed it across there for, as that did not go. Now it's Josh Bauer. 42 seconds to go on the power play. Behind the net, there's Novak. Puck to the back. There's a pet away as he misses the net. Now it's Novak against DeRosa. Scoop three, 32 seconds on the power play now. Graney circling around, takes the shot. Save me there by Makis as he's going to sprawl across with the left leg. The puck is still loose. Goaltender is down, gets back up his feet. Novak runs into the glass, hits my water ball out of the way. I'll have to get that back up in the next whistle as now the Bears will go back the other way. Thank you for that. Really appreciate that. Fan help helping me putting the water bottle back in front of the boards. I've had stuff like this happen before. Power play is about to expire, but back comes Josh Bauer. Pass across there for Canestra, and a nice save is made there by Makis as the power play expires. Lot of action happening in this game, especially for KU. Even though the Bears didn't score, the power plays have been pretty good pretty much all throughout this game so far. Colton Bates, the junior. He will go against Tyler Rupert. Off the tie-up, one defensively by, that was won there by Beamer, captain of the Knights, as now this goes back the other way for Rupert. 15 in navy blue, Rupert on the line, and the circle trying to get the puck free. Comes back towards the corner. Rupert still chasing for it as it goes behind the goal. 
little less than seven minutes to go in the second period. The game is tied at one here at Body Zone. As this puck goes way out of here, you've got to hit the net on the ice, pal, not the one over the glass. That was from Nicholas Paleno as he misses the target by a mile. I understand that deflected, but even so. Polano on the point for a wrist shot that goes wide off the glass. As now it's kept him in there by Kapensky. As now the McGinley is going to try to go for it on the corner as well as Colton Bates. Still chasing relentlessly for it. Slugging there was Bates again. As now goes behind the net of Jay Janney. Melito to Carpenter. Off the boards there in front. Bates trying to rush the other way. He could not. And now the... Colton Bates actually fell down as he gets it out of harm's way, chasing for it as the Bears are going to go for it. Here comes Canestra on the break, and another save is made there by Makis as we have an arm up in the air, delayed penalty as it's going to be called once again against the Knights. Another power play coming up for the Bears. Tyree Pedaway seemed to be chirping, and Nicholas Polona, who's the guy guilty of the penalty, as the Bears will take a two-minute power play with 6-0-1 remaining in the second period. And who else will go for the face-off on the power play? None other but Stephen Graney himself. And he wanted there for Novak to take it away, but he could not. Actually, that was a one-draw for the Knights. Now it's taken by Novak. Novak on the point. Now DeRosa passed for Perico, but he lost possession of the puck. Gets it back as he backheads it towards the point. It's Novak. Flings one for DeRosa. In front of that is Bauer. Puck to the back is DeRosa on the blue line. Carefully approaching the left circle. DeRosa, centering pass. Tipped in front. That shot goes wide from Novak. Kept on side by Perico. 130 to go in the power play. DeRosa on the back. Bauer still waiting in front of the goal. Similar to Wayne Simmons down the Flyers. Always waiting in front of the net. Novak still on the point. Past the Grady. Special teams looking pretty good here. Coached by Raul Batista and Billy Booth. As Grady gets a shot. Deflects it. Nearly on the crease there. And getting a piece of it with his stick on his hand there was Makis. He made a desperate heave with his right arm to do just enough to keep it out from going past the line. Bears that close from taking a 2-1 lead. Less than five minutes to go in the second. Less than one minute to go in the power play. Back comes Josh Bauer again. Uh, moving on the edge, going behind the net. Bauer, now for DeRosa. DeRosa on the forehand. Waiting. Pass goes there for Graney. Holding on to take the shot or the pass. We'll see what he does. He'll pass it there for, for, for DeRosa with a slap pass that deflected as now Paracone's going to have it on the corner. 25 seconds. We have another arm up in the air. We have another delayed penalty coming up here. And it appears to be going against the Knights. And it is. The Bears, we have a cross-checking call. The Bears will have a five on three for the next 18 seconds. And they'll have a power play then for a minute 42. So not too long before the power play was going to expire for the Bears, they'll now have a 5-on-3. If they don't score soon enough, I'm sure they'll be frustrated going into the second period intermission because they've had a lot of offensive opportunities, and yet the game is only tied at 1. But we'll see what they'll do here. Repsic, Carpenter, Canestra, Foster, and Melito on the ice now for the Golden Bears. 5-on-3 begins now. Repsic backhand one for Carpenter. Going behind the goal on the rolling knuckle puck. Backhands one there for Phil Melito in front of our view. Now comes there for Canestra. The freshman there for Melito as Canestra will forehand one off the boards for Melito. Gets it back anyway. Canestra approaching the circle. Making some deeps. Takes a shot. He scores! Back games for the freshman Chase Canestra with goals, and it's two to one. Several Kunstown players stumble towards the Kunstown bench. They fortunately are okay, and it's two to one. Golden Bears, Canestra, goal number three in the season, second game in a row with a goal. This is quite arguably not arguably. This is the biggest Kunstown crowd the team has had so far this season. The Bears will still have. 
a power play for a mi at least a minute 37. Officials appear to be discussing, I'm not sure they're discussing the goal or something else. They're gonna, have a, they're gonna have a conversation with the Kutztown bench. Not sure exactly what this is. I do not have any communications or color commentators between the benches as you see in the National Hockey League. And we'll wait for any further signal. Not sure if there was any goaltender interference with the play. Uh, unfortunately, I am not ESPN or TNT or NBCSN, so I cannot give official review as the goal has been confirmed. It is officially 2-1 to one Golden Bears. So now it's back to 5-on-5. Five 3.43 and counting to go in the second. 2-1 to one Kutztown as they've taken the first lead of the night. Rolling puck goes nearly to Dalton Bowl, falls down, whacked into the zone, Dalton Bowl, and then we took possession. As now this goes back towards the corner behind the net. Cameron Wolt's pass deflected, as now turning back around there was James Morrison, clears it past the blue line. Petaway getting it behind his own goal. Head away there for Swatwinski. Gavin Wolf couldn't take it either way. That shot deflected and goes right into the equipment there of Jay Janney to stop play. 3.05 to go in the second. Off this tie up. Knights nearly take it away. Nice left pad stop is made by Jay Janney with the left pillow pad. As now the Bears have it back at center ice there for Luke Reps. It clears it past the line. Rolling knuckle puck goes there for Graney. Backhand pass there for DeRosa. Rolling puck back to Graney as he's whacked there in front from the stick of Helena who had a penalty earlier in this period. Graney with a wrister from the high slot that goes wide. Gathered up by Novak, nearly collided there by Polano as now Perico with a shot deflected by a stray stick as good play is made there once again by Beamer. Shoots it all the way down, but it'll be an icing against Newman. Repsick for this face off on the circle. Puck is dropped, play resumes. Melita with the wrister that was blocked. One time by Perico as that missile misses his target. Josh Bauer backhands one back for Melito. His shot goes high and wide off the glass. Perico will forehand one back, intended pass for Repsick as he's going to need some help. Josh Bauer has it on the corner. Wax one free, deflected off a Millersville. Uh, beg your pardon, actually, not Millersville. New, Newman stick and back up. Breakaway chance here. Here come the Knights. And a chance there in front there for Guthers for a chance. And that he did not finish it there. Jay Janney stayed with them. Bailey Guthers. Sorry, I couldn't keep up with the name. So hard to keep track of that for a brief second as the Knights unable to go. Back comes Josh Bauer alone on an onside play as he's going to hold up behind the net, waiting for some reinforcements. Bauer on the corner. For Melito, hits it off the back part of the goal crease. Repsic gets checked by his shoulder as now Repsic will go for it again. Now goes to Phil Melito. Melito with a wrister that goes wide and behind the net for Josh Bauer to get it right through. Trying to make a wraparound attempt as the Knights shoot it down. Arm is up in the air. Foster chases for it, but no icing here. This comes in front of the Golden Bears turn it over. Jay Janney makes a save as it, the puck is still loose. Not sure if Jay Janney had it for a second. That shot goes wide. What a chaos in the Kutztown crease as it's cleared back to center ice. Last minute to play in the second period. Gosselin trying to avoid Bauer and Bates. Backhanded by Carpenter. As now the Knights will try to regroup here. 33 seconds of counting to go in the period now. Canestra with a near check. Had a nice goal earlier. Backhanded in front of McGinley. He'll make a no look pass that's unintendedly given to Canestra at center ice. Canestra deflected pass nearly off Antonio Onella. As now the Knights try to rush back the other way, but they can't. Canestra trying to get past the line, but cannot. Now the Bears bring it back there for Foster. Trying to make some deeks. Five seconds to go in the period. Back in Westbrook. Canestra. He scores! He 
Reese got another one, Canestra! Three to one, Kunstada, buzzer beater! 2.4 seconds left! Just like how Newman had a buzzer beater in the end of the first period to get their first goal, the Bears get their fair share of blood, and it's three to one, Bears! What a way to end the period for Kutztown's viewpoint. Canestra gets his fourth of the season. What a gem of a freshman the Bears have found. And after two at Hockey Fights Kansas tonight, it is three to one Golden Bears. Third period's about to get underway. It is three to one Kutztown. I just want to mention something really quickly because it's something I noticed in the first period and the second period. Well, actually more just in the first and going into the third. During the first period, I had some connection issues. So if, there, if the stream had some times where it might freeze for a second or so, I apologize for that. For some reason, on the corner where it down shoots offensively for periods one and three at body zone, I seemed to have a little trouble. Second period, I didn't seem to have any issues, but I had a little connection issue moving this back to here. So if that happens from time to time, I apologize. I'll try to avoid that as much as possible. So in the second period, Kutztown was down one nothing. They had three goals. Third period, Graney across the line there for DeRosa. Again, sorry for the connection issues. I'm not able to control that. Hopefully that would happen again. Foster keeps it on the line. It bounces off the boards. Happen again. Foster keeps it on the line. It bounces off the boards. You know, he cleared back the other way as now the Knights are going to move back on the other way there was Ralph Trevente as he's going to take a wrist shot that goes wide and that there of Jay Janney. Bouncing puck tipped towards the net there of Jay Janney. One time blast goes wide. The chance coming from long range was from Colin Kaminsky as now. And the puck is still on the corner. Bouncing towards center ice. Melito's pass towards Bauer as now bounces towards the stick of Josh Bauer as well as as well as Jackson Foster. Melito pass across as the Knights couldn't get a shot on goal there. Swatwinski all the way back down. Pass going to Colton Bates. Bates at center ice goes past the line. Bates will backhand one back towards the corner. Trying to make a center and pass. Couldn't get it through. Racing back the other way, there was Ryan Goslin. As now on the wing there for the Knights was Cameron Wolf. And goes behind the goal. Tip back in front as he'll bounce back towards the corner and towards the point there for Grabelski. Jay Janney was scrambling in his net, circles around, and we will get a whistle to stop playing with 17.30 to go in the third. Off this tie up, the Knights will try to four one hand, forehand one back towards the corner as it's cleared down. Aiden Grabowski will make this pass towards center ice there for Petaway as it's shot down back behind the corner there. Intercepted by Canestra as he now has possession on the point. Canestra towards Petaway as it's tipped past the blue line. Racing back the. All right, we're back now. Sorry for that. So right now, Miller's. So right now. Newman will go on the power play as this goes back towards the corner there. It goes back in front nearly of Jay Janney. And now it's tipped back off a Kutztown stick and down towards the corner. McGinley trying to get right towards the net as he lost possession. The Bears take it away short-handed. Backhand play is made by DeRosa. Goes behind the goal there for Melito. Hopefully the connection is you stop. I was connected to the rink's free Wi-Fi. Seemed to be a bit of an issue. I actually just disconnected from that. So hopefully that'll end the pro problem from that. That 10. Saturday pass comes back in front there for Dabritri as that tip, tip stick goes there for Batten for the shot. And a save is made by JJ. Rebo is loose. They score! The Knights on the power play once again. That's scored, and it's a one-goal game at Body Zone. It's now three to two. McKinley gets his 11th goal of the season. That's now 11 goals in seven games for 16 in Navy Blue. And Newman has made it three to two. They are down by one. Both of their goals on the power play. 
off this faceoff as now Newman will shoot one down towards the defensive. Canestra, as this puck goes off the safety netting to stop play. He actually went into the seating area. He actually went into the seating area. Off this faceoff as now the Bears will give it to O'Neal. So watch out. It's a one goal game here at Body Zone. And hockey fights cancer tonight. Izzy centering pass goes off a Newman stick and down towards the corner there for O'Neal. Who goes down, try to get one across there as Newman will shoot it, will move back the other way. We have a delayed penalty coming up here. Arm is up in the air. It's going to be against Newman as meanwhile, here's Foster waiting, shooting, blocked up, gets tumbled over on the circle. And the Bears, we have a late check after the whistle. Made by Foster. Not so sure we're getting a power play now for the Bears. We were seeming to get one at first. We'll see. No, we are not getting a power play. It's going to be four on four. Foster frustrated in the box. And quite honestly, I hate to say it, but that was kind of his fault. The play was already over. He did not need to make the unnecessary check. Not sure if you were able to see it watching live or whether this game is what you guys watch this game live or recorded but it'll be four on four for the next two minutes 1509 to go in the third period it is three to two kutztown novak will chase for it now he steals it away there from gutens as now kabrowski will give it back to gutens fans on the clearing attempt and now gets it past the blue line Skating for it away there for the Knights for a shot there. And a save is made by J.J. That chance came from Zach Beamer. This pass intended for DeRosa off the Kutztown bench boards. Chases for it behind the shoulder there of Finn Plummer. A few Kutztown players trying to kick it free off a few skates. Comes free. Newman chases the other way. Aiden Gabrowski is now. He's going to bring it past the blue line for a wrist shot that goes off the boards. That play was then made there by DeCastro is now the Golden Bears take it on the defensive side. A minute to go on four and four until we return to five on five. Pass go to Finn Plummer trying to take down Jackson Novak. Novak is now going to go to the bench for some rest, and he's replaced there by Phil Melito. Rainey's pass to Swatwinski. Swatwinski waiting behind the goal there for Graney. Swatwinski takes it back on defense. Swatwinski's pass intercepted there by the Knights. They're going to nearly take it away there. That was from Ryan Gosselin as he lost the puck. Good defensive plays was made in front of him as now the Knights still sit up here from Brian Barnett as now Graney makes a nice pass on the board. So this pass for Molito, but he couldn't get to the puck in time. Off the boards there was Nicholas Polano. Coming back the other way was Gosselin. Gosselin passed the line. Onside play for the Knights. Makes some moves there on O'Neill. Got it across there for a shot. And hey, it's deflected wide. A chance coming from Nicholas Polano. Now the Knights get another wrist shot that came there from Batten that was whacked down. Polano will, will try to get it back towards the zone as we're going to get a, another stoppage of play. Both penalties for both Kutztown and Newman have just expired. Seem to have some conversations of Newman players talking to the official. And while they are discussing this, I want to mention one thing about the Hanson costume. Uh, I took off the foil. The tape that I had trying to keep the foil in my hands just fell off and I just had to rip it off. Well, you guys saw it earlier. But hey, still got the jersey. Still got the glasses. And for some reason, Kutztown goaltender Colby Rosen is in the Kutztown penalty box. Not only it's strange that they're having a goaltender in that box, but he is a backup goaltender not even playing tonight. I'm not sure they called a penalty on him. I have no idea why he is in there. I have never seen something like this before. And what do, what in the world's happening? So right after I just said the Bears put Colby Rosen in the box, the Newman Knights 
are putting in goaltender Michael Fodkowski. I have never seen this before in hockey. So we have not only two goaltenders in both boxes here, but they're goaltenders that are not even playing. You know, I'm not saying, listen, I am not someone who is a genius of this game, but I can tell you that I know a lot. And even I can't describe this. Now Kobe Rose is going to come out of the box. What is happening here? I would ask for a professional analysis, a color commentator to give me a, an exclamation or a rules analyst here, but even if I had that, I don't think they could even explain it to me. So now Frankie Izzy's going to go in the box as they're going to still assess these penalties. Never seen anything like this before. The Knights have two players in the box now. They have the goaltender, Fodkowski, as well as Tommy. Angelo, and after all of that strange, stranger to think confusions we've just seen, if that even makes any grammar sense, I'm not sure if it did, but that was very odd. The game finally resumes. It's 4-4 four four for the next minute 46, as now Tyree Pettaway has it on the line. He's got Josh Bauer, takes a shot, and a nice save is made there. As now Bauer nearly takes it the other way. Mace can, made, a, made a nice save there earlier from Pettaway, as now... As comes back from on the corner. So strange. I don't. Let me know in the chat if any of you have ever seen that two goaltenders in the penalty box. Usually, when a goaltender causes a penalty, they have a player serving in his place. As a nice check is made by Josh Bauer. Never have I seen two backup goaltenders in the box. Rosen came out of it and was replaced by Frankie Izzy. Pass on Scott Winsky, goes to Steven Graney. Graney, Graney going past the line, making some moves, approaching the net, waiting, holding on. Graney shoots away as he tries to wrap it around as it goes wide of the goal. DeRosa's toppled over on the blue line. I think he's looking for a penalty. He's not going to get it. This pass from Graney. No one there for Kutztown to tip it in. Canestra, pass goes there for DeRosa, trying to make a side in that pass that would not go. Racing back the other way from the Knights there is Gosselin. Gosselin approaching that, going right to the goal! He scores! The game is tied! Ryan Gosselin ties the laces at three. Newman was down three to one, and they had tied it at three. Gosselin seemed to be very excited from that goal, not only because it's a big one, but he has tied the game and that is actually his first goal of the season. Always feels good to get your first on the year, and it comes up big as this game is tied at three. Momentum shifting in Newman's favor, as it seemed to be in KU's favor in the second period, not so much as of right now. Bates couldn't get it out of the zone, kept on the line there by Baton as Bates, not Baton, Bates will go for it. Those are two different players on the ice. As now the Bears have lost their 3 1 lead, but they still got plenty of time to work with. A little less than 11 minutes to go in the third pair. We're tied at three. Should be dramatic and interesting to the very end from both teams' perspectives. Gavin Wolf, the graduate student, shoots it down past the boards. This pass now goes to the towards the circle. As now a, a high stick comes flying up into the air. That was a Newman stick of someone's as this goes off the pads there. Uh, Michigan, turn over in front and a chance for Gavin Wolf was denied. Where have I seen this before? Last week in Kutztown's 4-3 victory over Delaware, a turnover was made by the Delaware goaltender for Gavin Wolf to shoot an empty net. It nearly happened similarly, although it was not an open net, but then again, the goaltender turned it over to Gavin Wolf, this time from Newman, Newman University. So Wolf almost trying to get another goal just like that to give the Bears the lead, but we still remain tied. Josh Bauer on the corner, the glass still shaking. Tipped off towards the circle as Newman will flip one to go down the other way. Chasing forward there is Antonio Anella. Now a few players for Kutztown and Newman collide with one another. Couldn't see who that was. That appeared to be Anella as one of the players that went down. And now he'll whack it free. Anella trying to get it past the line. 
And now Josh Bauer brings it through as his shot was blocked. Now Kutztown will bounce it off the stick of Phil Melito. Melito going to Josh Bauer on the wing, but it's an offside against Kutztown. Off this faceoff. This puck comes back towards the defensive side of the ice for Newman. Bounces off the official on the blue line unintentionally. Novak can't take it away. Novak touches the puck as it goes behind the goal. 9-20 counting to go in the third period. We're tied at three. Pedaway checks out. Player down hard towards the boards there as he takes down Tyler Rupert. Backhand pass goes behind there for Grabowski as his puck bounces off the board. It's kept on the line by Swatwinski. Bringing back the other way for the Knights. For a brief moment there was Cameron Wolf, And now back coming the other way is Graney. Pass the line makes another D. Graney doing this all night as he couldn't get a shot on that there. Bouncing off a few sticks and all the way down towards Michael DeRosa. DeRosa off the boards. Intended pass for Canestra. But that's will be an icing against the Bears. Off this tie-up as the Knights take it for a wrist shot that was blocked there from coming from the cross. -up. Meanwhile, here comes Canestra going for the hat trick. He scores! He's got the hat trick! And the Bears retake the lead! She's Canestra! Three goals on the night! And he makes it four to three Golden Bears. Justin Strom tipping his hat is salute. In the box between the two benches. And the Bears take the lead back. It's four to three with eight ten to go in the game. The highlight film of Canestra is going to be going all over social media as he makes a check. I take back the praise. Immediately after he scored, he causes a penalty. And the Knights, just when they needed, back to the power play, they go. I take back my praise for Canessa. I'm just kidding. He's done really well tonight, but that's something that might cost him as the Knights go on an immediate power play. A great opportunity to perhaps tie the game yet again. It's actually, oh, oh man. That check by Canestra is going to be a five-minute major. Huge chance for the Knights to perhaps tie the game or even do more damage. My, oh, my. Things are getting dicey here at Body Zone. Frankie Easy is actually going to go in the box now as he appears to be serving the penalty for Canestra. So five-minute power play, major power play. So even if... The Knights scored, just for those of you who don't know, the power play will continue. 8 3 to go in the game. All hands on deck for the Bears now. Shot off the draw to flex and goes off the safety netting. Off the tie-up. Newman takes it on the offensive side. They have it on the corner. I'm going to set up here. This pass comes back to the circle. Sia net there holding on there was Goslin who... Tied the game earlier. It's kept on the point for a shot that deflects and goes back towards the corner. Goslin swerving around on the point. Has it back towards the high swap for a pass in front of the corner. Attended there for Heleno. As now the Knights still take possession as the puck goes rattling nearly behind the goal. Now this puck comes back in front for a wrist shot. Saved me by Jay Jenny's biggest of the game. Denying Ryan Goslin. Big Kutztown crowd here tonight, hoping the Bears to hold on. We'll see what happens. This puck goes back to the corner, towards the high slot there. It's held on there by Traboto as now the Knights still control. They're going to take all the time they need. Baton on the corner. Now gets it back in front of the high spot for a rich shot deflected along its route. Rebound was there. They score. The game is tied again. Zach Beamer, the captain, ties the game at four. And for Goodstown, they can't be off their guard because it's still 347 to go on the five-minute major penalty kill for them. So Newman ties the game, but they still are not done yet. Plenty of time to work with to perhaps take the lead. They've only had one lead tonight when they led one to nothing. So off this draw, 
This goes off the glass and bounces towards the corner. The cross drop. Beg your pardon, that was Batten. Batten takes it back. Batten wears two. The cross drop wears three. The, the cross drop will pass it back in front. Baton takes it behind his net. Backhands it from behind there for Trebetti as he's going to give it back to Batten. Place catch from McGinley. They're going to rush back the other way. Batten making some moves, going past the blue line into the Kutztown territory zone. Holding on to the corner. Got it back towards the point of Trebitti as now DeRosa has it behind his own net. Six minutes and counting to go in the game. We're tied at four. Newman still in the power play for the next little less than three minutes to go on that in the five-minute major power play as that puck was tipped off a Kutztown stick as the Bears couldn't get it out. Comes back in front there for a race shot that's lobbed high and wide over the net. The chance coming from... Couldn't see actually who that came from. Now again, that came from McGinley. Sent one in front towards the blue paint. Did not go for a shot. Beamer touched it for a second. Deflected towards the net as that puck went off the stick there of Angelo. Back coming the other way, shorthanded. It's Graney with Molito, but it's an offside. D3 fans seeming to think otherwise. Newman goaltender, number one, Michael Podkowski, is still in the penalty box, actually. Perhaps they were just trying to make some space because Newman actually has three goaltenders tonight. They have the one in that and two on the benches, actually. There's a game I did for D3 a few weeks ago when they played Millersville D3 team. They had three goaltenders, but they had a lot more room on their bench. A lot less players for forwards and defensemen. But for Newman, they have a lot more to work with. This comes back towards the circle there. Whacking forward was Nick and Polano as now... We're going to get a penalty coming up here. A hooking penalty is coming up. It appears to be against Newman. Repsic seems to be taunting Nicholas Bologna, whacking his stick a little harmlessly on the ice. As now the Bears at least get some semblance of relief. So there's a minute 58 to go on the five-minute major penalty. So thankfully for the Bears... It'll, it'll no longer be a power play for Newman, at least for now. It'll be four on four for one minute, 58 seconds, and the Bears, unless there's any more penalties called, will actually have a power play for two seconds. 5 one to go in the game. How will this one end? In dramatic fashion is likely. Penalty shoots one deflects wide. Batten's pass. Tipped off the stick. Falling down there for the Bears was Petaway. The puck tipped off his stick as it rolls all the way down. Holding behind the goal there is Grabowski. Grabowski is going to make this pass going there for Batten. Batten on the left wing going into the Kutztown zone. Takes a wrist shot. And JJ, and he says, not today. 4.27 to go in the game. Tie game at four. Hockey fights can tonight. Here's a wrist shot that comes there from Robert Usa Delello as that goes wide off the boards. Now tipped off another stick as the Bears take it back the other way. Skinning towards the zone there was Paul Perico. Perico on defense. Forehands one to Bauer. Bauer gets checked. Possessed by Carpenter behind the goal. Carpenter takes it on the corner. Carpenter to Paracon on the point. Nearly lost it there. It goes to DeRosa. His shot was blocked down by McGinley. Chases more, but Jay Janney will come way out of his net to sweep it by. But turns it over to McGinley. Watch out. McGinley, it just won. And it goes off the side of the cage. I think that may have went off the post. Jay Janney, a near disaster caused by his clearing attempt play, or even a pass he was trying to make. Luckily, from KU's perspective, it did not haunt them, at least on that play. Puck checked away there by Make. By, uh, that was poked away by Makis, as now Carpenter will take it on the wing there. 3 12 to go in the game. We're tied at four. Next goal is going to be huge if we even get one. There is overtime in these college games. But there's no shootouts. Games that are end in regulation, 
Games end in an overtime goal or they end in a tie. There's no shootouts, but we're still in regulation. <laughs> Chickens made by Josh Bauer on the corner. Game retaliated by a few other players. Bears chasing for it behind the goal. Beaver nearly took it away as the Bears trying to get more offense going. Both power plays have expired. We're back to five on five. And a save has made the stop play. 2.37 to go in the third. Every shot on that's going to be intensifying to at least witness at this rate. I will switch tides to the other side of the rink if we get overtime, but we're not there just yet. Graney for this faceoff. Couldn't come up with it. Novak seals it away on the corner. Off the board, Sir Graney goes to Swamwinski. His shot goes wide of Makish. Rattles to Petaway. Backhander. Off towards the corner. Graney could take it away. Swawinski trying to go for it on the boards. As the Knights take it back the other way. Watch out. Here comes Beamer. The captain lost it there from Petaway. Novak's going to turn back around. Jackson Novak leaves it behind his goal for Swawinski. Now Petaway. Back to Swatwinski, out and past the Graney, going to Josh Bauer, past the line. Bauer behind for Graney, making a deke, goes behind the goal. Center one in front for Bauer, but he couldn't whack it through. 147 to go in the game. How will this end? We shall see soon enough. DeRosa, one-timer, that's blocked there. I believe it went off a of Graney. Friendly fire is on. DeRosa clears it in. Line change for the Knights. Same line still staying up for Kutztown for now. Plumber's pass deflected, going to Paracone. Bounces off the boards and behind the net. 120 counting the go. He almost counts overtime now because the next goal is going to be huge. Novak on the point, keeps it on side, but, but now Palolo, Palolo is going to shoot it down. All the way through, and back coming all the way is McGinley, but this is an offside. 103 on the clock. Off this face off for Reps, it couldn't win it as now the Knights move back. This goes behind the net. Last minute to play in regulation. We're tied at four at Hockey Fights Cancer Night. Bears moving back there. Molito lost the puck. That, trying to get the puck there was Bauer makes a check there, trying to take down Polito. Here's Mudo. Sending pass. Oh, what a big save is made there as Repsig was denied. Play continues as Paracone's shot was blocked down. Another chance for Repsig. Another save is made once again by Makis. He's coming up big there in these last few minutes. Nine, 19 seconds to go in the period. Line change now. Paracone lost the puck. Repsic that close to potentially winning the game. Ten seconds to go. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. We're heading to overtime. I have to switch sides. For the third time this season, the Kutztown Golden Bears are going to overtime. They won over the Ramapo Roadrunners from an overtime goal from Josh Bauer, and they lost to Delaware four to three in overtime a few weeks ago. As we're in overtime yet again. He got right off the corner there for a Novak to win the game, but he is denied. Off this faceoff. It's kept nearly on the line. Here comes Steven Graney. Pass across for DeRosa, potentially for the game, but as he gets it back to Novak. Four and a half to go in OT. DeRosa. Holding on there for the Bears. DeRosa still waiting, hanging on for Graney. Back towards Novak. Novak, here's Graney for the game! And another save is made there. Good chance there for Graney. As Makis makes his biggest stop of the night. McGinley passed the line. Shoots it back at center ice. So Kutztown one for, Kutztown one and one in OTs. This year, we'll see how this one ends up. Either a win, a loss, or even a tie, because no shootouts happen in the regular season here. As now the Knights are going to move it right behind the goal. Polano is going to get it to the side of the net. Oh, still setting up behind the goal, behind the goal of Jay Janney. 
Newman still sticking up for a wrist shot. See me by Jane Janney this, to keep this game alive for now. Back comes Grainy the other way for the Golden Bears. He's going to go past the line. Grainy, toe dragging the move nearly between the legs, but he lost the puck as McGinley moves back the other way. McGinley over the Kutztown line, waiting on the left wing, trying to get around De Rosa. This puck is fed back off the boards and then back towards the corner. Novak will hold on. Repsik trying to get out way past from Novak, but he couldn't be connected. Repsik trying to get one towards Novak, but no Golden Bear to take the puck. Gutens is going to take it back on the left circle. He'll hit it off the boards with a little, little less than three minutes to go in OT as they get a shot. They score! The Knights win in overtime. Jack Batten. Gets it past Jay Jenny. They all of his teammates come off the bench to congratulate him. And the Newman University Knights defeat the Kutztown Golden Bears in overtime. Kutztown now goes one and two in overtime. As now the game is officially over. Final score, the Knights... Knights win in overtime. An epic game from both sides. They win 5-4. to four. Newman now has won six games in a row. I'm Nicholas Garofalo. Thank you for joining us for Knicks Hockey Broadcast. Newman wins 5-4 to four in OT. Both D2 and D3 for Kutztown Hockey now go on a break for this weekend.